Alright, Shalom, Shalom. Back for another live lesson. First and foremost, as always, before I get started, I'm going to turn to the east. We all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the head apostles, slash elder bishops of Great Millstone, who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether you were here or forbear. All right, and today, it's going to be a quick uh, general lesson. I right, going into the timeline all right, of the fall and the rising of the Israelites. All right, so we went through the fall, and now we're at the time for the Israelites to get ready to rise up again. All right, and it's all been spoken of from the beginning by the mouths of the former prophets. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. And I'm going to start off with uh, chapter, uh, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 24. And it reads, The Lord showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord. After that, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah, with the carpenters and smiths from Jerusalem, and have brought them to Babylon. All right, so what is this talking about? Okay, the two baskets of figs represent the two lots of the Israelites. All right, you have the one-third, and you have the two-thirds. You have the righteous, all right, which is the elect, and then you have the two-third Israelites. All right, these are the two separate baskets of figs. It says, one basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe, and the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad, right? Because we are we are likened unto the uh, the fruit of the Lord, all right? The, the, the planting of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, all right? The cluster of grapes, all right? You have the Israelites are the cluster of grapes, and the elect is that few choice grapes that he has in that whole cluster, all right? It says, uh, verse verse four now, again the word of the Lord came unto me saying, I'll wait till this train go by. All right, so you got two, you got two lots. All right, you got, once again, you have the elect, the one third, and then you have the two thirds, which is the wicked of our people. All right, people who are, who are given over to the ways of Babylon. I right, follow behind Esau and his madness, all right? So Jeremiah 24 and 4, again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, the God of Israel, like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. All right. So going all the way back to when we went into captivity on the ancient Babylons, it's like ancient Babylonians, King Nebuchadnezzar. All right. The first, the first captivity of the four beasts. All right. <clears throat> the Lord, he had, he had an elect. They were he had elect that he already had chosen from the foundation of the earth. Even going back then, he said he prophesied that I will do them good. All right. And now we're, we're coming into that blessing right now. All right, we're preparing for the downfall of our enemies. All right, these heathen nations starting off first and foremost with Esau, Eden, the so-called white man. All right, and all these other different nations. All right, and get prepared for the kingdom of the Israelites. Okay, the Hawa, Bahashim, Yahushai, the kingdom of the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. All right, to be set up on the earth. All right, a kingdom that's going to dwell in righteousness. I'm going to get that again. Jeremiah chapter 24 and verse 6. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land. All right, so we're going to be delivered out of the land of the north, out of Babylon, and brought back to our homeland, which is Jerusalem, all right, the Holy Land. It says, and I will build them and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. All right, why? Because it says that the saints shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever and ever. And that's talking about really the whole world. All right, but once our kingdom comes into power, all right, once the Israelites have returned back to their homeland, it says that they shall be safe from fear of evil, all right, and never never have to worry about going back into captivity again. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and get that right quick. Uh, Lamentations chapter 4, and I believe verse 21, all right, it goes, it says that, it says, I, I, uh, no more shall thou go into captivity. So once the Israelites are delivered, that's it. 
All right, we're delivered and we're never going to go into captivity again. This is Lamentations chapter 4, all right, and verse 21. And it reads, it's like you bear with me. Okay, yep, it says, Rejoice and be glad. Also, like it, 22. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. All right, well, Zion represents the Israelites. Okay, so our punishment has been accomplished. All right, we went through captivity, we were here in slavery among the nations. All right, that time is, is, is coming to an end now. It says, he will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. So once again, you know, that's part of the gospel as well, okay? Him visiting the iniquity of our oppressors, all right? Those who have afflicted us, all right? It says, once we go back to our land, we will never be plucked up again. All right, going back to Jeremiah, the 24th chapter, all right, and verse, uh, <clears throat> verse 7. And I will give them a heart to know me, I a mind to know me that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. But they shall return unto me with their whole heart. All right, so that's what's happening now. That's why you see the men out there on the highways and byways. We live, we breathe, we eat, we sleep. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, and these prophecies. That's all we think about, man. All right, because this is, the, this is the planting of the Lord. He's the one that has planted that back in our minds. Thus saith the prophecy. Let's read that again. All right, Jeremiah chapter 24, all right, and verse 7. And I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. As, and as the evil figs, which cannot be eaten, they are so evil. All right, who is this representing? This is the two-thirds, okay? Because two-thirds of our people have completely given over into the ways of the wicked. I, as a matter of fact, the scriptures say they have became more wicked than the wicked. All right, let's go ahead and get that. Ezekiel, the fifth chapter. All right, Ezekiel chapter 5 and verse 5, it says, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. This is Jerusalem, a beautiful force and place. All right, the so-called Negro, Latino, Native American Indians. He's like, he like this, is, this is Jerusalem? This is the people right here? He says, I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. Why? Because we've been scattered. That's how you know it's a people before it's a place. He says, I have set Jerusalem in the midst of the nations. So the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians have been scattered across the four corners of the earth. It says, and she has changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations. And my statutes more than the countries that are round about her. For they have refused my judgments and my statutes. They have not walked in them. All right, so our people, they, they, they refuse the judgments of the Lord. They refuse to, to be obedient to what he says. All right, let's get that another chapter. All right, Zechariah chapter seven. Okay, Zechariah chapter seven, and I start at verse uh, eight. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah saying, all right, and Zechariah was one of the ancient prophets, just like you have the prophets out here today. All right, he puts the words in our mouth and we go out there and speak them to the people. Regardless of whether they hear or forbear. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. That's what that's what that's the message. That's what the Lord said. He said, Keep my commandments. And what, what is what are the commandments based off of? What are you saying right here? He says what? But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. You see, so our people, they've been, they've been uh, constantly rebellious, all right? The Lord said, hey, keep these commandments. Do, do, you know, execute true judgment. Do not oppress the fatherless, the poor. But what? They've taken on the ways of Esau, Edom, all right? They've taken on the ways of the so-called white man. He's the oppressor. All right, so now you see our people out here scamming, lying, cheating, stealing. All right, where they learn that from? They learn that from the wicked. You see, that's why it says what we just got in Ezekiel chapter 5 and verse 6. All right, we just read that they have turned my judgments into wickedness more than the nations. Our people have become more wicked than the devil himself, man. All right, but they've always been rebellious. All right, we already knew that they were not going to listen. The Lord prophesied of that in Ezekiel. Let's get that chapter three, and I believe verse seven. All right, 
Ezekiel 3 and 7, it says, but the house of Israel, all right, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, will not hearken unto thee. So even though we out here doing this, doing this work, preaching this blessed word, the Lord already said, they're not going to listen to you, man. The Lord already said that, all right? It says, for they were not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted, all right? So our people, they have a hard heart, all right? Stiff-hearted, stiff-necked, all right? And that's why the Lord's got to bring those judgments. These are the bad, these are the bad uh, figs that's spoken of in Jeremiah the 24th chapter. This is two-thirds right here, man. All right, going back to Zechariah 7. There's a little more meat on that. All right, Zechariah chapter 7 and verse uh, 12, it says, Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts hath sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. You see? So they made their heart as adamant stone. All right? Their heart meaning their mind meaning nothing could get through. They were set in their ways, all right? As, as, as the uh, saying goes, they were set in stone, all right? The people, they would not hearken unto the words of the Lord come out of the mouths of the prophets. It says, verse 13, Therefore, it has come to pass that as he cried and they would not hear, so they cried and I would not hear, saith the Lord of hosts, all right? And that's what happened. You, see, you saw our people went into captivity. We had yokes of iron put upon our necks. They fed our children the alligators, all right? Of course, they're going to have to pay for all these things, but right, why did these evils, why did these calamities befall our people? Because we turned against our power. We turned against Yahweh Bashi Yahweh all right? Even the heathens acknowledge that. Even they know that, all right? Let's get that in uh, Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 7. Let's go there right quick, all right? Even the heathens know that when we turn against our power, that, that we're weak. All right, this is Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 7. It says, All that found them have devoured them. And their adversary said, We offend not, because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, even the Lord of their father, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. So they knew that we had went off, and they were waiting. They said, As soon as they go off, we're going to get these people. All right? Psalms 83rd chapter goes into that. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. See? I said, That's going into it. And see, that's the thing about it. See, the Lord, he could have saved us at any time. But he said, no, you've got to pay for your rebellion. And now we're getting ready to come to that second time where the Lord is getting ready to destroy the two-thirds of our people for their rebellion. And we're coming here to give you warning. Day in, day out, week in and week out. Regardless of whether they're here or forbear. All right? Because ain't nobody listening. But it's already prophesied nobody's going to listen. You got Jakes. You got Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians walking by. Ain't nobody hearing these words. That's okay. All right, we, the Lord just said, give them warning for me. All right? It don't matter. If you don't want to listen, that's, all, that's your blood on your own hand, man. All right, Isaiah, let's get this. Isaiah 59. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 59. And verse, uh, I'll start at 1 and 2. All right? It reads, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Neither his ear is heavy, that it cannot hear. All right, so any situation that you win, the Lord can deliver you from it, including this captivity that we're in. All right, we, 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 we're at the bottom of society, you know what I'm saying? We live in the hoods, the ghettos, the barrios, the reservations. All right, and why are we in this condition? Because of our own disobedience. All right, it says, verse 2, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. All right, so because of the iniquity, the wickedness of our people, the Lord has hid his face from us. But as we as prophesied, as we just read in Jeremiah the 24th chapter, all right, he said that he was going to uh, uh, pour his spirit upon the seed, and they're going to turn back to him with all their heart. And that's what's happening now. That's the remnant. That's the elect. Okay? That's the good figs that are going to be delivered out of this place. All right? Let's go to uh, Psalms 81st chapter. Let's get that right quick. All right? Because the Lord said, if my people had hearkened unto me, I would have soon delivered them from their adversaries. All right, this is Psalms 81, all right, and verse 13. It says, oh, that my people, who are the Lord's people, you Israelites, all right, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and those who may look like other nations, but your seed line goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is the Lord's people right here. It says, oh, my people had hearkened unto me, 
and Israel had walked in my ways, I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. So if all the Israelites came on one accord, all right, and turned back to the law, said the commandments of the Lord, all right, through the power and spirit, through the faith of Yahweh Shai, all right, the Lord said I would have subdued their enemies, all right? But we know that only the elect, the remnant, is gonna, is gonna do that. So that's what we're doing now. All right, we're offering them spiritual sacrifices, okay? We're serving the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And what does holiness mean? It means we separate from the world. While the rest of the world is celebrating Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, uh, we've turned away from that. That word holy means separate. We've turned away from that. We came out of the customs of the world. All right? We're preparing ourselves as, as, as virgins for Yahweh Shai. All right? To, to be bid to the marriage. Okay? We're serving him in sincerity and truth with all of our hearts. All right? There's, there's lots of things that we could be doing right now, but instead, we're out here following the commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Well, let's keep rolling, though. Jeremiah chapter 24. All right, I'm going to read that again, verse 7. And I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, and they shall return unto me with their whole heart. And as the evil figs, all right, the two-thirds, which cannot be eaten, they are so evil. Surely thus saith the Lord, so will I give Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and his princes, and the residue of Jerusalem that remain in this land, and them that dwell in Egypt, and I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt to be a reproach and a proverb and a taunt and a curse in all places where I shall drive them. All right, what is this going to? It's going to the curses. All right, Deuteronomy 28 chapter. Okay? Verse uh, 10. And I will send the sword, the famine, and the pestilence among them till they be consumed from off the land that I gave unto them and to their fathers. And we know that this happened. All right? We were uh, 70 AD, right? That, that was the last time that, that we were actually all, you know, not all of us, because the Northern Kingdom had been exiled into the, what's known as the Americas today. And the Bible is called Arsareth, right? Arsareth means a land that no one had inhabited before. We know the Northern Kingdom, so-called Latinos, Native American Indians were already here in that time. But 70 AD was when we still knew that we were Israelites and we still had our heritage, right? On that side of the world, at least. But he completely drove us out of that land. A lot of us fled into West Africa. Uh, and from there, we were taken over here to America to serve out our captivity. All right, so the Lord made good on his word. And once again, okay, that's, that's, that's that part of the timeline. Now we're moving into the part of deliverance. All right, so we're going to, let's get another chapter. Let's go to, uh, let's see, where, where was I going to go? Let's go to uh, Ezekiel 37. Let's go there. All right. <clears throat> Ezekiel chapter 37, all right, going to that new heart that he said he was going to give us, all right, that's, that's that new heart, the new mind, all right, Ezekiel chapter 37, and I'm going to start at verse, uh, Ezekiel chapter 37, I'm going to start at verse, let me see, so I can bear with me, uh, I'll start at, so I can, Oh, you know what? I, mean, I think I meant to say 36. Yeah, I, I meant to say 36. Ezekiel 36. And uh, let's see. Hmm. All right, Ezekiel 36 and verse 16. All right, it says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Wherefore, which means for this reason, I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land, for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries. According to their way and according to their doings, I judged them. All right, so that's what happened. And we're still here today, all right, scattered in our captivities. It says, <clears throat> and when they entered into the heathen, Whither they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said to them, These are the people of the Lord, and are gone forth out of his land. All right, how do we profane the name of the Lord? All right. Well, one, we disobeyed all the law and commands. We broke the holy covenants, but then also, all right, calling on these false names, calling on the names of idols. 
all right? Jesus, Yeshua, Yehoshua, all right? These are all false names. These are, this is not the true name of the Messiah, of the God of the Bible, all right? His only begotten son, all right? But, you know, once again, this is all according to the curses of Deuteronomy 28th chapter, verse 64. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and get that right quick. All right, so any, any Israelite, all right, so-called Negro, Latino, Native American Indian, all right, you're calling on JC, you know you're going off. It's Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 64. All right, and it reads, it says, <clears throat> And the Lord will, shall scatter thee among all the people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there, all right, in the places where you were scattered, thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. It said, there, in the places where I scattered you, you shall serve other gods, all right? Jesus, that's another God. Buddha, that's another God. Allah, that's another God, all right? Yeshua, Yehoshua, all right? All these different, okay? That's, those are other gods, all right? Back, uh, when, when our people were in their land, when the Israelites were in their land, they were speaking Paleo Hebrew, and they prayed to the God of heaven whose name is Yahweh and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, which he wasn't around at the time, but you know, you have the one and true living power, Yahweh, all right, and he's coming in the glory, all right, he's coming in glory through his son, Yahweh Shai. So that's why, you know, we, we, we come in that name, Yahweh Bahashem, which means in the name of Yahweh Shai, the only begotten son, all right. But going back, so wherever you were scattered, we profane the holy name of the Lord. All right, uh, Ezekiel chapter 36, <clears throat> and first, uh, six like I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna let this go by. All right, Ezekiel at 36, and verse, verse 21, he says, But I had pity for mine holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Therefore, saith unto the house of Israel, okay. So called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, I do this not for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. And I will sanctify my name, my great name, which is profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord, Yahweh, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. All right, so the, the whole world is witnessing the Israelites raising up. All right, being purified, being cleansed, and they're about to witness our miraculous deliverance that's coming at the hands of the only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. All right, he's going to come with the, with the thousands of angels, with the troops. Okay, with, with, with it says, "Behold, the Lord comes with clouds." All right, thousands of, of so-called UFOs, so, the chariots. All right, that's that's going to be the deliverance of the people. All right, uh, of the Israelites, the elect of the nation of Israel. All right, they should be amazed at the strangers of his salvation. It says, uh, Ezekiel 36 and verse 24, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. So you're not going to be all the idols that we were calling on. He says he's going to cleanse us from all that. All right, you're not going to be calling on the idols of the nations anymore. All right. So now we've returned, we're calling back, we're calling on the true proper names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son in the Paleo Hebrew tongue, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, right, which is prophesied of. Alright, he said, I'm gonna give you a new heart to serve me. Alright, with all your mind, all your spirit, all your heart. Alright? Ezekiel 36 and 26, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in all my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. So this is not of us. This is of the Heavenly Father. He's put that spirit on us. That's why he says he's going to sanctify us, make us clean before the heathen. And the heathen are going to know that this is the planting of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. All right? We're, we're holy, separate from the rest of the world. All right? That's how we're becoming now, as he intended us to be. All right? It says uh, <clears throat> Ezekiel 36 and 28. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. And I will save you. I will also save you from all your uncleanness. And I will call for the corn, and will increase it, and lay 
no famine upon you. All right, so all of our curses are getting ready to come off. All right, that's the time we're coming into. Our curses are getting ready to come off of us, and they're gonna go unto our enemies, all right? It says, and I will multiply the fruit of the tree and increase of the field, that ye shall receive no more reproach, a famine among the heathen. Then shall ye remember your, your own evil ways and your doings that were not good, all right? And shall loathe yourselves in, in, in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. All right, so all these things are going to come to pass, man. All right, like I said, we're being cleaned up right now all right, in the eyes of all the people on earth. They don't recognize what's happening, but soon when the Lord, when the Lord brings these evils, you're going to see exactly who the true people of the Lord are, those who keep his commandments. He's going to deliver them. And that's really only the elect of the nation of Israel. Like, no one else is keeping the law of his commandments. No one else is out here on the highways and byways doing the work, that, as it said, the prophets will be doing in the last days, all right? Ex except for the Hebrew Israelites, and specifically those of Great Millstone, all right? And their affiliates. But anyways, let's, let's keep rolling. All right, it says, uh, oh, this is beautiful. All right, Ezekiel 36. <clears throat> And verse uh, 32, not for your sakes do I do this, saith the Lord Yahweh. Be it known unto you, be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. So we're ashamed of all of our past wickedness. But the Lord has made us a new creature. All right, it says, <clears throat> thus saith the Lord Yahweh, in that day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the waste shall be builded. Right, because the Lord's going to completely destroy all this earth. And we're going to have these heathen nations in captivity and slavery rebuilding the earth. All right, it's going to say that. It says, and the desolate land shall be tilled, or is it laid desolate in the sight of all that pass by? So it's going to be rebuilt. All right, it says, uh, you to bear with me. All right, verse uh, 35, and they shall say, this land was desolate. That was desolate has become, has, has become like the Garden of Eden. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. So the earth is going to be rebuilt right, by these heathen nations, man. It says, Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, the Lord, built the, build the ruined places and plant that was, that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. All right? So that's what's, that's what's getting ready to happen. <clears throat> Thus saith the Lord, that I will, I will yet for this... Yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock, as the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem and her solemn feast. So shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know the eye of the Lord. So we're going to be increased, all right, once again upon the face of the earth. We're not going to be under the curses anymore. And let's get ready to close out. Let's, let's get one more chapter. We're going to close out with this. All, right. all these prophecies. All these words were spoken and prophesied of going back even to the beginning. All right, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, all right, and verse 1. And it reads, And it shall come to pass when all these things have come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, all right, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord thy God hath driven thee. All right, when, when did we receive the blessing? That was during the time of King David and the 40 year reign of King Solomon. That was the blessing. And now we receive the curses. So we're in that time. We receive both the blessing and the curse at this point. It says, verse 2, And shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul. All right, so the Lord, this is prophesied of, and we return to him and serve him with all of our heart and all of our soul. Verse 3, That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity, and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all nations whither the Lord thy God has scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the outermost parts of the earth, all right, which that's where we are, we're on the outermost part of the earth, on the other side of the world. I call ourselves black, Negroes, African American, Latinos, Mexicans, all right, Native Americans. That's not who we are. Now, we are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, all right? It says, if any of thine be driven out of the outmost parts of heaven, 
from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. All right, so he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna gather us up. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. All right, so our heart is being circumcised. We're turning away from past wickedness, all right? Our heart is being circumcised, and we're serving the Lord with all of our heart and all of our soul, all right, as we were intended to from the beginning. It says, <clears throat> it says, uh, let's see, verse 7, And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee, all right? And who persecuted us? Uh, really, all these heathen nations did, all right? But we already know, first and foremost, our, our main enemy is Esau Edom, okay? So-called white man, that's the main one who persecuted us. He says, let's get that again. Deuteronomy 30 and 7, And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments which I commanded thee this day. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good as he rejoiced over thy fathers. All right? So, that's what's getting ready to happen, man. All right, this, this is the timeline in which the Lord set up, which he prophesied all the way going back to Moses and all the, the former prophets of old. All right, so we're getting ready to come into that. If you want to be a part of that, turn back, repent. All right, seek you the old path. All right? Learn these prophecies. And focus on your how about me out shot because those gates of mercy are closing. All right, as we read in Jeremiah the 24th chapter, uh, he's going to destroy the bad figs and he's going to deliver the good figs. You want to be one of the good figs. All right, so, anyways, I'm going to close out with that. Lord's will, this was edifying to the elect, wherever may be scattered across the four winds of heaven. Turn to the east and give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the head apostles, slash elder bishops of great millstone, who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessing, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether people are here or forbear. Until next time, Shalom and abide the ball. Shalom. Shalom.